Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning devotional brought to you by Golden Isles Primitive Baptist Fellowship and Heart Floss TV. I'm V. Vernon Eckleberry, and momentarily I'll bring you a lesson entitled Rejoice, a Strategy for Hard Times. But first, I'd like to tell you about Bart Millard. Uh, he had it tough growing up. He had an abusive father who was also an alcoholic. In spite of being told that he'd never be good enough to become a professional singer over and over by his father, he became an accomplished singer with the Christian group Mercy Me. At last, Bart and his father were reconciled, but only a few months later, his father passed away. Now Bart had to deal with grief added to his troubled past. Grief for a father that he once hated. He handles it the best way that he possibly could, and that is by composing a song that brought joy again to his life and to millions of others besides. Bart Millard is a living example of rejoicing in the Lord always. Rejoicing is a strategy for hard times, for difficult situations. Now listen to Brian as he sings the hit song that uh, Bart Millard wrote uh, on the occasion of his grieving for his father and dealing with all of those emotions. Uh, the name of the song is I Can Only Imagine. You didn't write this song in 10 minutes. It took a lifetime. How'd you do this? I got some stuff I need to sort out, and I deal with it the only way I know how, and that's to write a song. Will I stand in your 
make it all I can only imagine I can only Thank you, Brian. That sets the tone for our lesson this morning entitled Rejoice, Strategies for Tough Times. The scripture is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. And it reads like this, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Those are the words of Paul, who is going through some tough times. He was being held in bonds in a jail cell in Rome when he wrote this letter. But in the midst of all of that, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And that means all the time under all circumstances. And to emphasize it, he says, And again, I say rejoice. Our text breaks down into three principal thoughts. Rejoice, first of all, and in the Lord, very important. Secondly, and always, all the time, under all circumstances. You know, it's easy to rejoice in good times. But what about the tough times when it's most needed? Well, Paul gives us seven strategies that expand on this verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Here in this same chapter, we find the seven strategies. First of all, Paul says that we should view all circumstances as in the Lord. Now that's in our text. Rejoice in the Lord. Now it's impossible to rejoice in tough times or really any time outside of our belief in the Lord, outside of our relationship with Him. But particularly when things aren't going well and we need that therapy, that therapeutic emotion of rejoicing, uh, we arrive at that only through our relationship with Christ in the Lord. The second strategy for rejoicing in tough times, Paul said, comes when we use the circumstances as an opportunity to be a witness of God's grace. Verse 5, the first part. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Now that word moderation means quiet courage in the original or calmness. And so if, if you have such this in, in your time of trial, if you're able to exhibit a quiet courage because of your faith in God, 
uh, then what a witness, what a testimony uh, of your faith that is to others who know your circumstances. The third strategy here for rejoicing in tough times is to remember God's nearness. Verse 5, the last part. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. We, we all love that psalm, Psalm 46, that reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear. So this strategy is to never forget that no matter what you're going through, where you're at, or, or what the circumstances are, God is always near. Now the fourth strategy is to refrain from anxiety. And we find that in verses 6 and 7. Here Paul says, be careful for nothing. And that word uh, careful is anxious uh, or, or to worry. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, all things, in other words, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We, we spend, uh, who knows what the percentage is, but it's very high. We, we spend a high percentage of our time when we're going through trials, worrying about things that never come to pass. So a strategy to be able to rejoice, to find uh, some reason to find happiness, uh, even when it's not a happy occasion, is to be careful for nothing, or in other words, worry not. Don't be needlessly anxious over the thing. Now, Paul's fifth strategy for rejoicing in tough times is practicing contentment with the things we have and not fretting about what we don't have. Verse 11, and, and this is Paul's personal testimony. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, I have learned in whatever state, whatsoever state I am, wherewith, therewith, to be content. I'll read that again. I have learned in whatever state I am, therewith, to be content. And so, uh, what a great strategy to be, for being able to rejoice in tough times than Paul's own example here. And that is being content with the things we have and not fretting about the things we don't have. You know, if we take inventory, no matter what the circumstances, if we take an inventory in our life, we will always find but we will always be able to list things that had escaped us because we see the smoke and we don't see the horizon. But there are many things uh, that we are blessed with, even in those times when we think we may have lost it all. So Paul says that we should, as he did, learn to, in whatever state we are, therewith to be content. Now, the sixth strategy for rejoicing in tough times is believing in the enabling power of God in you through the Holy Spirit to overcome whatever the situation is. And we find that in verse 13. Paul, again, gives us his own testimony and asks us to apply it to our own lives. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now remember, Paul was in a tough situation at that time, but still there was this power through the indwelling spirit, an overcoming power 
that Paul carried with him to the prison cell. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, and you can too. And the seventh strategy, have faith that God will provide for your need. And this is verse 19 of the fourth chapter of uh, Philippians. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply. So that implies that perhaps uh, what we stand in need of, our being rescued from a difficult situation, may not be immediate. But faith sees afar off. It sees beyond the present. And Paul and you and me must be able to say by faith that God shall supply all of our needs uh, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So that, that includes everything. We all love the song, God Will Take Care of You. The lyric was written by Sevilla Martin, and it was during a time that she experienced a sudden illness. And her husband, who was a minister, uh, was uh, getting ready to go off uh, to a preaching appointment, but he decided that he should stay with his uh, ailing wife. And uh, while they were going back and forth about the right thing to do, their young son spoke up and said, Father, God will take care of mom while you're away. Well, so the father went off to his appointment, and, uh, and Sevilla was so inspired by the words of her son that she wrote this classic hymn, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whate'er betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, He will take care of you. Now that's a strategy for rejoicing in tough times. May God be with you until we meet again.